In this video, I'm going to tell you the strategies that every programmer needs to follow if they want to use coding to build real wealth. So many of us see the big salary numbers for software engineers online and they think, well, building wealth with coding is easy. I just learn to code online, get a high paying job and boom, I'm rich. But unfortunately, it is no longer that easy. And if you just do this and you don't consider the key factors that every programmer needs to consider when it comes to building wealth, you are going to be stuck in the rat race forever like so many other programmers. So in this video, I'm going to share you the underlying strategies of wealth building from my own experience and based on what I've learned from having a lot of very successful friends because as exciting as coding is really what most of us want at the end of the day is simply a prosperous life and whether you like it or not money is a requirement for that and given my age range I think I've done extremely extremely well so in this video I want to share some of these lessons with you and how you can apply them with the skill of coding so first of all when it comes to building wealth there are always going to be different stages to this journey and assuming you're not born to wealth or anything like that by far the hardest stage is going to be the first stage. Charlie Munger always said, by far the hardest thing you'll do is making your first $100,000. Although with inflation, that number is pretty high now. But anyway, and the reason for that is, is that there's really only two ways to make money. The first way is having skills and using your skills and trading your skills and your time for money. And the second way is assets. That means either owning property or owning stocks or owning digital products, which we'll get into later on in this video, that can give you returns. And the problem is that in the beginning, you have a neither of those things. You don't have skills and you certainly don't have any assets. And so in the beginning, if you have very little money to your name, the only thing you can really do is to use the skill path, which means you're going to have to learn some high income skills as fast as possible. And of course, in this video, we're talking about coding, which is definitely still one of the best skills that you can learn to make money. But this is where people really trip up. Humans by nature are impatient and we want to start making money now. But what you need to understand is that in order to get into the earning stages of your life, you need to go through a season of learning. That means right at the beginning, your only focus should be on building your skills, the asset of your skills as fast as possible and just focus on learning as much as possible. Because the thing here is that at any given moment, whatever skills you have now, you can go and take you those skills and go and earn with those skills. But the more patience you can have to learn higher value skills, to get better and better at these skills, the higher your earnings will be per hour or per day or per month or whatever. And the thing is, I'm not just talking about learning coding versus learning to flip burgers or something like that. Even within coding, certain skills are much higher leverage than other skills. So what do I mean by high leverage? Certain skills that you learn are going to essentially give you much better bang for buck for the time that you put in to learn them. For example, if you learn some very obscure detail about some obscure programming language like Scala that no one uses, the time that you put into learning that skill is not going to give you a very good return. So we want to focus on learning skills that are going to give you a very good return for your time. And I think the absolute highest return on your time, the highest leverage coding skill you can learn is data structures and algorithms and coding problem solving, sort of interview coding problem solving in general. And the reason for that is that simply learning this one skill can give you access to the best jobs out there. So I'd like to announce to you that I've just created a new course called Algo University that is designed to be a fast track course to teach you everything you need about data structures and algorithms to teach you to solve actual interview problems. I used to be really terrible at this stuff, so I simply figured out what is the exact list of topics that I need to learn to actually solve any lead code problem or any interview problem that I might be tested in any coding interview. So I did it and then based on my process, I created a framework for myself, which I have now put into this course. It's perfect for beginners. You don't need to have any prior knowledge about any of these topics. If you don't want to learn it from me, that is fine as well. But make sure you don't ignore learning these high leverage skills as a programmer. So the trick here is that in the beginning, you should forget about making money because eventually the skills that you will develop will allow you to earn much, much more than the guys who don't focus on that. So in summary, your step number one is to focus on learning and forget about money. And most people are not able to do that. And that is why they stay poor right at the first stage. So now assuming you've spent a lot of time and a lot of effort in the season of learning, you're now pretty good at whatever skill you have, which means that now you can move on to your season of earning with the caveat that you also should remember that your season of learning is really always going to be going on and you always should be learning new skills. But throughout this season of earning, there are three things that you need to keep in mind. Maximizing your income, 
minimizing your expenses and investing as much as possible. First, let's go the two paths of earning money with coding. First, we have the path of the employee. So if you just want a stable nine to five job and that is the best fit for your personality type, then you are going to have the big advantage of having income that is going to be reasonably predictable. Like whatever company you end up working for and like however much people get paid in your location, you can predict how much money you're going to be earning on a monthly basis or even in a yearly basis pretty well. But the downside is going to be that your earnings are always going to be capped. So talking about these three pillars, in terms of maximizing your income, you just wanna to try to get the best possible job that you can get with your current skills. And that doesn't mean having to get the best job straight away. You might start off, or you can just focus on learning as much as possible, like perhaps a startup. And once you've learned enough, you can use that experience to get to the Googles or the Facebooks or things like that. So no surprises there, but for software engineers specifically, there's actually two other ways that you can increase your income even further. One of these is gonna be this overemployment thing. Basically because of the fact that software Software engineering is such an easy job at the end of the day, especially until recently, it was possible for people to literally work two separate jobs at the same time, which means you can literally double your income. This is not gonna be illegal or anything, but the companies might not like that. So if you wanna try doing that, then just do it at your own risk. But the other way is going to be doing something called freelancing. Now I've mentioned freelancing quite a few times on this channel in previous videos, but essentially the benefit of freelancing is going to be that the pay is overall usually going to be higher. Now this is gonna be especially important if you're not based in the US or in Switzerland where salaries are super high. So for those people, something like freelancing that allows you to work for clients in the US or in higher paying markets will allow you to maximize your income a lot more. So then the second pillar of minimizing your income is the part that's especially going to be a lot more difficult than for entrepreneur people that we're going to talk about in a second. And the reason for that is that in most cases, if you want the highest paying jobs, you're also going to have to live in the highest cost of living location. That's just how supply and demand works. Taxes are sky high in San Francisco, New York, London, and these popular places. Cost of living is also sky high. So the solution to this, in my opinion, is to do whatever you can to be able to work remotely. Luckily today, it's more possible than ever. A lot of companies are allowing you to perhaps work for a company in San Francisco, but live somewhere else. Perhaps the pay is gonna be slightly lower, but you should be able to save a lot more this way as well. And now also the reality is, especially in your earlier years, you do not want to get into lifestyle inflation. You wanna make sure that you prioritize saving over balling out and eating out every single day and things like this. No, I'm not gonna be one of those guys that says like, oh, you can never have Starbucks or something like that, but you need to prioritize your future self over having fun in the moment if you want to build wealth. That is what I've been doing for years. That is what I still do, even though I'm making a bunch of money right now. Because as we will see, once we get into the investing part of this equation, the money that you're able to save in your earlier years is going to be so valuable later on when we start accounting for compound interest and all these kind of things. Lifestyle inflation is also a danger, especially if you work in an office environment where you have a lot of colleagues there that may be starting to get nice cars or watch or things like this and you feel like you need to sort of impress them you need to make sure you don't get into this trap just focus on your process live comfortably but try to avoid the temptations as long as possible now when it comes to investing what I would do as an employee is have some money saved up for your bank account usually people recommend around a six month emergency fund so look at what are your six months of expenses and save that on your savings account somewhere somewhere that's easy for you to access at any time and the rest start investing aggressively into to index funds or ETFs. And you can look at other types of investments, but these are gonna be the safest ones long-term that are also going to allow you to get very good returns. At least historically, this is not investment advice. This is just what I do. Now, what if you want to start your own business? What if you wanna work for yourself? Now, this is gonna be a much more unpredictable path, but if you manage to succeed, the potential is going to be infinite. And that is the first benefit of this path over the employee path. Your income is not capped, but what I would very much call caution you from is leaving your job too early. I think just quitting your job to pursue a new business that's not proven in any way, that's not making any money yet, is one of the stupidest things that you can do. Do that nine to five and then from five to nine, start your side hustle, work on your startup, your YouTube channel, whatever you want to do. Eventually you'll get to the point
point where both of these are making money and now you have two income sources that are bringing money and once you start feeling like okay the fact that i have to spend nine to five on my job is really taking away way too much from my business that's now already succeeding that is the moment to quit when you've already proven the business now this is going to depend on your risk tolerance again this is what i would do and this is how i did it when i left my job for my business but in terms of building wealth at least for me personally i can tell as an entrepreneur because your income is going to be extremely unpredictable it made me just try to save even more money because it made me even more cautious of getting into lifestyle inflation because I don't have that predictability of knowing how much money is coming in. And this is what I would recommend to you as well, because who knows, maybe your business is going to fail in a year. You can never know that. So you want to make sure that you stack up as much money in your savings and your investments as possible so that if worse comes to worse, you will have a lot of time to then figure something else out or go get a job if you need to. In terms of maximizing your income, as an entrepreneur, in the beginning stages of your career, you really cannot be thinking about work-life balance. I don't care what any of you say. This is what all of my successful entrepreneur friends have told me. This is what I've heard from everyone that I've listened to a podcast and on my own experience as well. Building a business is hard work, but the hardest part is getting it off the ground. In the beginning parts of your career, you want to front load as much work as possible to get that plane off the ground. And once you get into those cruising altitudes, once you get into the level where you're happy with it and you can start hiring people, you can start automating things, that is where you can start taking it easier. In terms of investing, the only difference is that the best returns on your investment are probably going to come from investing in your skills as an entrepreneur and on investing into your own business in other kinds of ways. But personally, because I'm very risk averse, I still put a lot of my money into these index funds and ETFs just to have that security. But this will depend on how capital intensive your business is and things like this. But here, the massive advantage of being self-employed is if your business is online, which is most likely will be if you're building an app or something like that you can absolutely minimize your expenses and you're going to absolutely minimize your taxes as well if you're willing to do what i call geographic arbitrage if you're not an american citizen you can simply just leave your high tax country to a place like dubai where i am to a place like southeast asia singapore that have much more reasonable taxes and in most cases you'll also be able to save a ton of money on your cost of living as well so you can absolutely maximize your income and minimize your expenses and that makes just a massive difference and this is why i think in the future being location independent and utilizing this geographic arbitrage is going to be the way to make it and really build wealth in this world so even if you're an employee this is something you want to consider are you able to work remotely globally from a different country that allows you to optimize for taxes and things like this? As I observe what's happening in all of these major Western cities, I can see that it's becoming more and more and more difficult to build wealth if you're having to live in one of these places. Unless you're earning like a ridiculous amount or the amount that you could earn in those places is so much higher that it makes up for the difference, of course, then it might be very wise to look into if you're able to live somewhere much cheaper and with a lot lower taxes. So last but not least, we have this season of investing and obviously this season will also start during your season of earnings as I just briefly mentioned it but the difference here is that when you're still earning money and you don't have that much invested yet the returns that you're able to make from your investments are going to be far lower than what you can earn with your active income from your skills but this level which by the way even I haven't reached yet the amount that you have invested in index funds in ETFs in crypto whatever you're investing in is going to start to become so important relative to the active income you're able to make from your skills that it makes sense to start putting a lot more effort into thinking about where to invest as well. I can't talk much about this yet because again, I'm not at this level yet, but this is really the final level. But the other place where you really should be investing outside of these physical and financial assets is digital assets. Now, digital assets are very interesting because they don't actually require you to invest money. They just require you to invest time for example this entire youtube channel is full of digital assets like every single video is a digital asset that is generating views and then via those views is generating ad revenue and i've got my own digital products like my courses that are also digital assets that took a lot of time and effort to build but are now able to give me returns on a continued basis with minimal extra time that i have to put into them so if you go through all these steps you go through your season of learning of maximizing your skills and then season of earning of maximizing your income while minimizing your expenses while putting your money to work as much as possible you will be able to become financially free much faster than you ever thought possible 
and the value of financial freedom isn't necessarily even having money. Like beyond a certain point, like believe me, money will not make you happy. The benefit of money is not the stuff you can buy with it, it is the freedom that it gives you. And even beyond that, it's not just freedom for yourself, freedom for your family, for your future kids, the future you'll be able to build them. Coding is one of the most potent tools to build wealth and build an amazing life for ourselves and for the people around us. So don't waste it and really prioritize understanding how to maximize your money because if you do that your future self will thank you now obviously for you the most difficult part of the journey is going to be figuring out how to maximize your income as a programmer but if you want to learn how to make ten thousand dollars a month with coding which is a really good target for anyone to hit then i recommend you watch this video right here where i go into the details of the step-by-step -step process of the four different ways to make ten thousand dollars a month with coding as fast as possible so go watch that video next and i will see you in the next one